All right, I guess the next segment is going to be me swapping over all the components from this motor to this motor. Now we just have to spend some time converting all the good stuff of this one onto this one. Set this up just like that one is. We're going to use the horseshoe intake manifold, not this old school tubular one. It doesn't have as good airflow. Uh, this one is a... Let's see, this is a 2000-2001 motor. Uh, you can see right here, it's got the bolts for the coil pack rails. However, they converted it to the old uh, distributor cap and rotor thingy going on here. So uh, we're gonna convert this back to this style, the camshaft positioning sensor. We're gonna have to go set the timing on this, the old toothpick method. I'll show you how to do that when the time has come. But yeah, gonna start doing some swappings, swap everything over. And of course, we're gonna have to go ahead and build the front of this motor. That should be good. All right, while well, tearing down the new engine that's gonna go in the Jeep, uh, tearing it down, cleaning it up, I did notice that there is a broken E12 bolt in there. It's not too deep. Gonna try to weld something to it, maybe a nut or a screwdriver, and then uh, try to turn it out. All right, that looks good. Gonna pop on my impact, and hopefully we could back this out nice and gently. Hey, hey. worked like a charm. Whew. Still hot. There it is, winning. All right, little test fit. Oh yeah, so it's nice and neat. All right, take a good look at these ears. We got the bad 4.0 right here. Got these engine bolts right here. We got these nice little dowels that go in. Put the bolt in the dowels. The dowels help line up the motor to the trans or the bell housing. I'm gonna thread in here, come out a little bit here. Now let's go over to the new motor and look what I just discovered here. A broken off bolt with some kind of weird drilling in there. But we're gonna have to go drill that out. And then maybe we could put those dowels in, plug them into here, put the dowels on both sides. This side looks nice and clean. So a little bit more work to do, no big deal. All right, got a big half inch drill bit, fits nice and neat. And we'll lube this up, ram it home, see what happens. Yeah, we're making some progress. Clear. All right, here's the progress of our 4.0. Uh, as you can see, I cleaned this up a little bit. That was after I went ahead and I cut off some of this ear where the threads were stripped out. And I got myself a 7 16th by 14, the uh, coarse thread, to just put this in here. I don't need to thread it into the engine. I could just get a wrench on here, tighten this down. And as you can see, I put the dowels in this engine from the other engine. And uh, this is good to go here. And yeah, so I just cleaned this whole thing up, painted it a little bit, getting ready to continue to build the front of it. I already did the timing chain and I put on the alternator. If you want to see the timing chain video in detail, check out the link here. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue to build this up. I think next I'm going to put on the exhaust and intake manifold. I clean this up real nice. You're going to want to make sure there's no chunks of goo or schmoo or anything that would give you an exhaust leak. I'm going to reuse this gasket because this was a nice metal gasket. I went ahead and cleaned up all the rings around here, make sure it seals really well. And of course, we're going to reuse the horseshoe manifold. I cleaned this up with some, uh, some purple power stuff. Came out all right. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. It's very important that you put on the intake and the exhaust before you get it in the Jeep, because it is so tight, especially with these big cats right there. It's really hard to get to, trust me. 
put this on before you put the engine in the Jeep, you will save yourself a lot of trouble, trust me. So we got this cleaned up and I reinserted my studs right here. This is an E10 bit. Go ahead and put your studs in and there's dowels right here. This helps the whole alignment process. It gets the gasket on nice and even and it also helps you get the exhaust on first, nice and neat. All right, if you're reusing your gasket, the uh, the scary horns go right in the middle, facing up. <laughs> there we go, set up nice and even on the dowels and the Dan H's. Why they're Dan H's? Because they're studs. Yeah, all right. Don't follow. There we go. And the exhaust right onto the studs. Now you're just gonna grab your freshly cleaned intake, line it right up, grab one of your manifold bolts, they go right into your head. All right, these are precariously dangling on by a couple hand tightened bolts right there. These bolts are specially designed with this little cup. Don't forget this big thick washer cup. It grips both the intake and the exhaust together and uh, you're going to want to reuse these when you torque them down they hold and they're not supposed to move I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this one and this one this way it doesn't fall on me when I'm reaching under here to this nightmare this is hard to get to while the engine is out of the Jeep imagine reaching back here with it in the Jeep it's, uh, it's a nightmare, it takes forever so that's why we're assembling this now and you know what you could go ahead and put the nuts on this because this ain't moving anywhere and yes if you're wondering they are all 14 millimeter notice where my hand is guys I would not be able to get in here if the motor mounts were on it. We got all the studs and bolts hand tightened. I'm just gonna go ahead and torque it down. I believe you start with the outside two. They get about 30 foot pounds of torque. And then we start with the inside two bottom and then work our way out. Uh, they get like 27 foot pounds, but I'm just gonna give them all 30. I'm gonna put the motor mounts back on right here. And these are the motor mount bolts. They have some uh, red Loctite on it. I'm just gonna put a dab of the blue Loctite on it because I don't want my motor mounts wiggling out. That would be bad. So I don't mind if these are a little bit tight in there. And uh, this is the 2000-2001 style motor mounts that have this heat shield riveted on because we all know how hot those cats get. I'm gonna send it home with the 14 millimeter Big Dog DeWalt. All right, before I go ahead and put on the passenger side motor mount, I'm gonna go set up the camshaft position sensor. This is the whole shaft. This is the drive gear that turns your oil pump. The top is the sensor part. Uh, this comes off with uh, 730 seconds, very unusual for a uh, Jeep to have a 730 seconds, but uh, oh, that's what this part is. So we're going to take off the sensor itself and expose the innards. Now this thing, if it goes bad, you could just easily replace this cap without taking apart all this junk in here, then you won't have to do this next procedure. Uh, also, if this goes bad, it will give you uh, similar issues as the crankshaft position sensor. This is the camshaft position sensor. We'll take this off and let's see. 
we are going to go to the manual for the instructions on how to get this in. Here we go. A nice important page of the manual. This is what we just looked at. And this is the installation procedure. Now this is what we have to do if it has been removed without everything being synced up, if you will. Let me take a screenshot of this for you. Feel free to print that one out, guys. So now we're gonna spin this shaft right here. See that little hole in there? We're gonna spin that hole till it lines up with this hole. We're gonna go ahead and insert our toothpick right there. The toothpick alignment method. So this is uh, synced up for your best timing. The only timing. Now you're gonna wanna take a look at your harmonic balancer and note this little notch right here. It's usually got white out on it and a little divot right there. You can see I have it lined up with the zero right here. That's uh, gonna be top dead center. Now we're gonna want cylinder one on its compression stroke. So what we're gonna do is rotate this crankshaft until we get top dead center again while cylinder one compresses. All right, here we go. This baby's coming around and it is sucking in. Do not want that one. Keeps going, coming around again. Now, puffing out so we know it's compressing. So it is compressing, and here we go. Boom, zero, beautiful. All right, let's remove this little clamp. And now we could insert the drive gear right down in here. There's a little notch for that oil pump. It's gotta line up. There we go. And of course this notch goes towards the back because that's where the sensor comes from. All right, now we're gonna put on the clamp. It's 13 millimeter, we're just gonna snug it down. All right, I'm gonna slide the toothpick out. There we go. And install our cap. Make sure there's no crud in there. Okay, now we're gonna tighten these sensor mounting bolts nice and gently to 15 inch pounds. Right there. Beautiful. Now we'll go ahead and snug down the clamp. All right, passenger side motor mounts. Get a little bit of Loctite. And we're gonna send them home. At this time, I'm transferring over the oil pressure sensor. Just using a little tiny dab of silicone on the threads. And you can tighten her up with a 1 and 1 16th. There. All right, I'm just gonna continue to build this side of the motor. Gonna go ahead and put in my spark plugs. Also make sure you got all these little doodads for your grounds. All these little ground connections are there. I cleaned them up with a wire wheel and threw some dielectric grease on there. All right, gonna put in the spark plugs now. Time to assemble the back of the motor. I'm just gonna go uh, match this up right to the place it was on the other engine. Here we go. Now the pressure plate or the flywheel. Now these things only line up a certain way. There's a pattern here, so if you think you have one lined up, you better make sure that all the rest of them line up. Aha! Always in the last spot you look. Now we're gonna hand tighten these bolts. Don't forget this little flower shaped washer either. All right, now we're gonna start the torquing, go around all of these to 35 foot-pounds. And we're gonna crisscross, of course.
Now we're going to bump it up to 80 foot-pounds. You might need an assistant pressing back on the front of the crankshaft. All right, and the last torquing is to 105. 15 to 110. Ooh, that's tight. Yes, got it. Woo, all right. 110, boom. So much pressure on that pressure plate, I ripped my finger. How about that? Wow. to go up just a hair. Oh, right there. Oh. Yeah. Ha, in. <laughs> Dude, that's a high five moment. Yeah, that was good. Wow, look at that. It's in. My face is disgusting. Oh, hey, I'm recording. What's up, guys? So, uh, last you saw, Tommy came over. And we just got the engine in. And I guess we got a little carried away. Forgot to record. And, uh, well, there she is. It's in. Uh, we were nonstop all evening. It's 2 in the morning. But uh, the engine is in, and it is sweet. So uh, we're going to fill it with fluids, start it up, and then I'll close out with some final... What? What's that word? Thoughts. Yes, thoughts. I'm tired, Tommy. Tommy, say hi. Say hi to you two. What's up, guys? <laughs> this is Tommy's Jeep. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's do it. If you're reckless when you pull an engine and you break your dipstick, this is a factory replacement. Well, not factory, but it fits. Dorman 917366. Oil dipstick. There we go. A complete 4.0 engine swap. Every nut, bolt, washer, completely original. Except for this thing. <laughs> it was a broken dipstick. But, uh, yeah. We got some fresh fluids, fresh oil, oil filter. We just need an air filter. Maybe a couple other little things like uh, rotting elbows for the vacuum line. But we're going to do a quick start. But I think since I didn't weld the pipes closed again. Uh, and it's uh, 2.30 in the morning. So we don't want to wake the neighborhood. Good morning guys! I'm pretty sure that was some of the worst welding I've ever done. Let's just cross our fingers. Hope we got the job done. Let's start this bad boy up. Let's see how it works. It's better. Just started right up. That's all that counts. Not bad. All right. We are driving. 
on the road. Low fuel, but good battery charging. So we know the alternator is up and running. We got fuel pressure and the temperature is slowly working its way up to operating temperature. So uh, we know the sensors work. So far, so good. Pretty sweet, guys. So this trip, this trip, this swap, it took about four days. It took me three half days, because I'm busy, got a lot of stuff going on. And it took me one full day putting it in and uh, getting it running. So uh, a little bit more than a weekend job, maybe a three-day weekend. Get a nice holiday weekend, and uh, you could do the engine swap. A bunch of things that saved me time was not labeling all the parts. I know that sounds counterintuitive, uh, labeling all the nuts and bolts. It's good if you want to be organized, but that takes a tremendous amount of time. I just put all the nuts and bolts back where they're supposed to go and the spots that I removed them from, so I knew when it was time to install that part, all the nuts and bolts were right there in my parts. Um, what else did I do? Uh, the wiring, I didn't label any wiring. That's because I'm pretty experienced with uh, XJs. I know where all that stuff goes. Uh, also, the wires have memory. So if you have a 20-year-old fuel injector uh, wire harness and you just lay the injector harness right back on the fuel rail, the, the plugs will just dangle right to where they're supposed to go. It's like they want to get hooked back up. So that is... Uh, that is that, um, and I'll go over a couple more things with you in a little bit. So, uh, see you guys. Okay, we're back here in the driveway. Took this thing around the block a few times, and it is up to temperature and running awesome. So the old motor had about 160,000 miles and developed what I believe to be a rod knot. Let's go check those miles. Tell me you have an XJ without saying you have an XJ. Click, click. Yeah, about 160,000 miles. The new motor we put in has about 110,000 miles and it is really smooth. So now, check this AC, baby. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, main objective complete. Engine swap without dismantling the AC jackpot. And a uh, huge shout out to Dave for the engine and Jimmy for the engine delivery. And uh, all the stuff I did on the front end of this motor, guys, I did film because I have a bunch of other videos. You can check out a water pump video, my timing chain videos, all the other stuff I have on Rec J and so forth. But yeah, again, this is running great. It is nice and smooth, purring like a kitten. No more knocks, no more clunks, or what have you. I would say this is definitely a successful engine swap. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap up this video. We are all done with our Jeep XJ 4.0 engine swap. We're out here waiting for the owner to pick it up. Thank you, Tommy, for letting me work on your Jeep. This thing runs great. You're gonna love it. We got no knocks. We got no leaks and the AC is still ice cold. So thank you so much for letting me work on your Jeep. We saved another one. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate that. So feel free to give me a like. Remember to subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.